It has been said that average people want you to stay average. Welcome to the Breaking Average Podcast, the podcast designed to challenge you to break the mold that average has on the world. Each episode offers insights directly from those who choose to break average every day. Now, for the latest insights, here are your hosts, Paul Gustafson and Mike Harbour. Hey, welcome to the Breaking Average Podcast. I'm here with Rick Morris, and we, uh, we're, we're going to dive into a great discussion. We're missing Mike Harbour. He couldn't join us this morning as we uh, record this. But Rick, how you doing, my friend? I'm doing fantastic, Minnie. I, I'm ready to roll, and I'm ready for the audience to hear uh, an amazing interview that you, you had an opportunity to do. Yes, a fantastic interview. You had a chance to sit down with Coach John Mosley. We'll get to that just in, in a second. But it really tees up our conversation today. We're talking about one of the critical factors to team strong leadership from the book Breaking Average, and that's the yes factor. We already started last week with the yes factor. This is part two of the yes factor. That's right. In fact, the yes factor that we're going to be talking about today is alignment, right? So there's three phases of the yes factor. You have invitation, which we talked about last week. You have the alignment, and then we've got belief, which we'll do in the next podcast. So today is all about alignment, and I can't wait. In fact, got a couple of quotes that I always like to, to share. One says, growth is never by mere chance. It is a result of forces working together. That came from James Cash Penny, or even better, and I think this is one that uh, you and I both uh, love, Paul, which is Jim Collins and Jerry Pora said, building a visionary company requires 1% vision and 99% alignment. Right there. That is a quote. You know that this is, uh, I love Jim Collins. And uh, we're going to talk about Jim Collins, I think, a couple times today in our next podcast. But that's a great quote. So I'm going to come back and pull on that in a little bit. But um, I'd love to share this story. And let me kind of, can I tee this up? This Please do. That we yeah. have? Please so do. So you're a Netflix guy, right? Oh, of course. So on Netflix, I know you've seen this, right? Last Chance University, the basketball one. Have you seen that? Absolutely. Fantastic. I've seen all the Last Chance you used, not just the basketball, but yeah, the basketball one was great too. Oh man, this was so good. So uh, there's a story behind that, just in terms of me watching that. I was like, I was so mesmerized. I was glued to it, had to watch it, binged it in one day. And it was so good. Now, last week we talked about um, The Greatest Showman, which is a fantastic movie, right? So here we're talking about a different element of alignment and sitting down with, with Coach Mosley. I mean, he is he is definitely a, he could be a D1 coach. In fact, he has been, but now he's at East Los Angeles College helping out some of these young guys who really it's their last chance. It's obviously why they call it Last Chance You. And what really stood out for me in this interview, and we're gonna share part one today, guys, is his focus on commitment so look for that. Listen in for that when you uh, when you hear the interview, but watch it as well when you watch the show. Look look at this leader and his commitment as a leader. It is so powerful. Look about look at at the connections. It is so powerful on how he maintains those connections. And at some point at some points, Rick, you saw this. There seemed to be some disconnects, but he really back ended it and created a stronger connection, which I thought was powerful because. Some of these young men, they've thought that coach was against them. Coach was never against them. He was building them up, right? Call it tough love, maybe. I don't know, but it was really powerful. Um, and then that third piece is that he was very creative. He was creative as a coach, creative in terms of how he made those connections, creative in terms of how he led that team. And talk about team strong leadership. I loved his other coaches too. So I, a lot more to tear, uh, share and unpack about Coach Mosley, but I think that does enough to just to kind of roll right into the interview. What do you think? Absolutely. I, I do do have a couple of comments about him, though. So first of all, I think what I love about this series is that you do get the personal stories. For a lot of us that are in professional speaking, we do podcasts, right? Personal stories are where it's at. And that personal story creates the connection. And so this series has a way of, of showing these personal stories in, in a new light that makes you really want to root, not only for the for coaches and the players. And, you know, I find myself Googling some of the players afterwards to see what happened to them. You know, I think that's always cool. But Coach Mosley was named one of the 50 most impactful coaches 
coaches in JUCO men's basketball, right? Head coach and alumnus. He, he went back to East LA, right? He was a player yeah. there. He's kind of a legend there. Uh, and sometimes that's difficult, right? Sometimes that's difficult to come back. But uh, uh, And then he entered this, this season that they're showing with a 189-50 and 50 record during his tenure. He has built a powerhouse program and yeah. continues to, I mean, think about – all the great programs get all the great athletes. And then you have some of these people that, that needs uh, extra love and they need a little extra care and extra coaching. And, and those are the players that he ends up with. And, and, and it's almost like a transient university in a way. So he, he doesn't have the same team every year. He basically has to start from scratch every single year. And at most only has the players for two years. So to build a program like that, I think is really, really amazing. So as, as Paul said, it is a, an absolute binge worthy, uh, uh, episode or Bedgeworthy series and let's yeah. uh let's just uh kick it over now and watch paul interview john mosley well i am sitting down with coach mosley he is the head basketball coach for east la college there in la and uh if you haven't had a chance we've already highlighted the netflix show last chance you but uh here he is the one and only coach mosley coach great to see you how you doing today paul doing well uh excited to be on man i'm honored you guys uh, reached out to me um, we're still in a little bit of uh, pandemic mode. Unfortunately, Los Angeles is one of the the slowest recovering, I would say. So I still, it's been almost a year and mm. and a couple months since I've been in the gym. But hey, we're we're getting through it, and we'll we'll figure out how to you know after we get connected with those young men again, figure out how to how to recover. Yeah, and and I can't wait to talk about just sort of the connections that you're having with these young men, and I think it's going to be part of our our conversation because, you know, you are a lid lifter coach. Um, just mm -hmm. the way that you conduct yourself day in and day out, your passion that you have. It's not just for the game; it's for for these young men. Mm -hmm. And but let's dive into that. Let's ask, let's kind of explore that. What compels you, Coach Mosley, to be the leader that you are? You know what? I, there's so many people that's lifted lifted me up and kind of supported me. Uh, and yeah, you do have to kind of gravitate towards those people. You got to trust them. Uh, but the main one is, you know, it's it's my faith, it's my relationship with Christ. I, I think He had compassion for me. And and if you knew the the person I was, and yeah, I wasn't robbing people, I wasn't a criminal. But if you knew what where my heart was. You know, the, the, and a lot of us are walking around here with it's going on in our, our country right now. Our hearts aren't right. And we, we can be great on the outside, but our heart isn't right. And I think uh, my heart wasn't right and I wasn't living right. And, and I shouldn't be where I am today, but he had compassion on me. And so it compels me to have compassion on, on kind of others. Uh, there was a level of conviction that I have now a level of conviction that I have now, yeah. uh, you know, for others and that I didn't have before. It was all about myself. And I think, you know, it's, it's kind of something that when you, you, you kind of get humble, when you, you draw neat, you draw that close to God, you get humbled yeah. like, okay, I'm really nobody. And my purpose should be to go out there and help others. So that's kind of similar to where I'm at uh, now. Yeah, you know, and, and I love that story because, Coach, we've all fallen, right? We've all tripped up. There's our points in, in our lives where we're like, well, gosh, who am I? Who am I to make that kind of impact? And uh, you, you're sharing really a story of um, redemption, you know, for you and, and really for these young young men that you, you're, you're grooming, you know, day in and day out and the, the effort and energy that you put in. And not just your, these young, young men. I, I saw that with your family, too. And I think if anybody watched the Netflix show, Certainly, you have a, a love and a, a passion for your fellow coaches, your teammates, your family, and your church, too. So, um, Coach, I'm, I'm really curious. Tell, tell me, because you're a person of faith, and, uh, and a lot of folks that were listening to this podcast are, too. What, what is a verse that you, that's kind of like your go-to verse that really affirms you? Well, I, I like to think that for all the struggles that I have gone through, or even the young men, uh, I like to kind of share that all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and called according to his purpose so that, that we know that, man, for, I try to share with these guys, we, we really talk about changing your response to the adversity and things that you're going to go through. So mm. we, there's going to be highs and there's going to be lows. For every high, there is a low. There's always going to be highs and lows. So 
how can we change our response? And what helps us get through knowing that we're going to have these highs, knowing that we're going to have these lows, uh, realizing that everything's going to work out to the good of those who love the Lord. So God has a purpose for those, those, uh, you know, disasters in our lives. I mean, at the end of the year, uh, if you watch the show, uh, there's a purpose to all that. There's a purpose to what's going on right now that's going to direct us towards, uh, towards God. And, and ultimately, I love that one because I, I, it reminds me every day, uh, you know, yeah, it feels good. It's hard to be reminded or to point towards God when everything's going well. But then when things go down, all of a sudden we're looking around, okay, God, where are you at? Yeah. And so I, I'm, I'm always reminded that everything is going to work out for his good, good purpose. For his glory. That's, it doesn't matter how it looks, it's going to work out that way. Uh, and I love that. I love that message. You know, certainly that was a tough scene where we're all watching, wondering, are they going to play the next game? Are they going to be driving up north? And uh, you get that call right outside, you know, your office there. And then you have to go on that bus and, and tell the guys, hey, we're not heading up. We're not going up. That must have been heartbreaking for you, right? Well, the, the biggest thing is... I felt like I let the guys down because, you know, I, I kind of told them throughout the year, like the whole year is building up, trying to sell them and try to build this dream up and grabbing them and pulling them with this carrot. Like, come on, let's go guys. Follow me. Let's go. We can do it. And you know, all the things that Sean and Joe, now it was just those four guys, mm -hmm. like four or five guys that they highlighted, but 15 guys are going through this. Yeah. 15 guys have issues. 15 guys have five problems and you multiply five times 15, all those yeah. issues and problems that I'm kind of digesting and kind of going through navigating myself, coach Hunter, coach uh, Robinson. We are all trying to help these guys navigate academics, all these issues. I mean, Joe and Deshaun are dealing with legal. Deshaun loses his mom. He's working on his mom's estate and I'm dealing with lawyers with him. Joe's got lawyers because he's got legal issues. And mm -hmm we all get through it and they hold it all together. But then I felt like I let them down, even though it was my fault. Yeah. So that was first. And I was like, okay, how am I going to help them? The first thing that came to my mind was how am I going to get them through this? Something that I cannot control. The first thing I thought about, because the, the carrot that we dangle is, Hey, we're going to get you guys here at this community college. And then we're going to move you out. We're going to get you guys moved on and get that college scholarship. We want you to be at a better place than when you came in. And so here I am thinking, how am I going to do it? Yeah. How, how am I going to help these guys to get out? There's this pandemic. Mm. How am I yeah. going to sell these players? We were supposed to go and play in front of 300 or so college four year coaches. And that was going to, that wasn't going to even guarantee anything. Yeah. But it was going to give us a better opportunity. And so I'm thinking, like, how is this going to happen? Yeah. And that was the first thing that came to mind. And I was so disappointed for them. I was so hurt, like I let them down. And they're looking at they literally, when they were in the locker room, they were literally not down, kind of. Because they were thinking, like, okay, what is, how is Coach Mosley going to get us out of this one? And I was just like, I have nothing. I don't have anything for you. But there's going to be more painful moments. This is a painful moment again. Like you guys went through some painful moments when you were 10, 11, 12. You went through painful moments a year ago before you got to me. Guess what guys, this is another painful moment and we're gonna have to come out of this. And so that was what was heartbreaking. I was hoping we got to see, we got a chance to win and they got a chance to feel that sense of accomplishment before they went back to a painful moment because you know, we're gonna, I mean, next year, Paul, you're going to feel some pain next year, right? You may feel pain tomorrow. We're going to feel pain. But I was hoping they got a chance to feel that success and that, that win and to be on top before that pain came again. But unfortunately, that pain came again. And it, it came at that moment. And I, 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 felt, I felt like I let them down. Now, yeah, you know, I would say even though that was a tough moment and really a tough moment for everybody, you did not let them down, coach. You did not let them down. You chose to align yourself, al align to some values. And what we saw as a, as, a, as a viewer of that show, 
and and realizing that this is reality. I mean, this is not just a scripted TV show. This really happened. Um, just the way that I saw that alignment, like these guys, they're they're together. You know, we're we're all in the same foxhole. We're all fighting that same fight. These guys were were gonna stay together one way or the other. I'm curious how they're doing now, and I love the little after piece where they they highlight you guys highlighted some of the the things that they're doing now but yeah. you didn't let them down coach you, well, you encouraged they, them you, you you lifted them up and well we felt it that they did and so in that moment i did feel like that they were ready to move on so i told them that they won and i know that sounds corny right you guys yeah. are winners in my book right that's what every yeah. coach says at the end but i i really felt like that they culminated they did win because they 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 did understand I just wanted them to enjoy the fruits of their labor. And, and they are right now. They've all moved on. They're all in colleges. I wanted to enjoy it, to enjoy it a little bit longer and get the win and, and have that in their back pocket that they can always go back to and say, hey, I accomplished this. But they did culminate. They did win. They were on track to graduate, and they all graduated. They all moved on and got to schools and colleges. So I, at that moment, I felt like, they they figured it out, but I yeah, just wanted yeah. them to experience, get that extra icing on the cake. Uh, and so I did say that that was a special group. They're going to always be bonded. You know, they're going to say, hey, I need you in my wedding, you know, or all yeah. those different type of things. That, that's that type of group. And I've never had a group that way. So yeah. uh, I've never had it. And, and I've been around teams, but that was a team that really liked each other. They really – they weren't, I didn't feel like they were going to lose because of a selfish intention. Normally you, you lose a game because of a, it could be just one selfish intention in the game and it was no selfish intentions. So I was, I was excited about that, you know, uh -huh. uh, and I thought that that was what was carrying us. And that's what I love being around. And sometimes I, I used to have to create adversity because they were doing so well together. You know, I just, I just make up something to get upset about, you know, so that they can, Make them work or make them run for some weird reason, you know. Or make them think. What about that one moment where you give them the eight-minute kind of silent treatment? That was classic, Coach. Yeah. What was, going, what was going through your mind during that little segment right there? Well, you you know, as a believer, the first thing that happened is I prayed, right? So yes. I'm praying like, okay, these guys, this moment, what do I do now? I'm, I'm questioning. I'm asking myself, okay, what do I want to do? Because immediately when I say everybody on the line, Okay, so I probably, re number one, I probably reacted too soon. Because mm -hmm. when I look back, I didn't really want to run them at that moment because I'm like, ah, we got a game in the next day or something. It was something that was the, the reason why I didn't want to run them. So yeah. I was like, oh, man, I got these guys on the line. I really don't want to run them. And I said, well, maybe I'll just do a quick little run. But I'm praying like, Lord, what do I do? But at the same time, I'm hearing whispers like, oh, I know he's going to run us. And so I kind of want to kind of switch it up on them a little bit. Like, okay, they think I'm going to run them. Well, I got to figure out something to do. So I'm kind of walking and I'm thinking. But then as I start to walk, it actually gives everybody a time to reflect. Yes. You yes. know, and I think that's really the biggest lesson that came out of that. And that, like you said, it was unscripted. It wasn't any, I may have done that one other time in, in you know, in nine years that I've been a head coach, but it was unscripted and it was just that moment that just needed it. We just needed to stop. Yeah. Stop. It was great. Uh, you know, sometimes you just got to step away from it, think through it, allow them to allow the team to kind of think through it. And uh, it, it was a powerful moment. So, and um, you know, there's a lot of great moments in, in, in the show, but let me ask you a question, coach, what does breaking average mean to you? Why is that important? Well, I, I think it's, especially in our culture, in our society, man. Um, you know, I, I love the, I love the uh, not being, uh, just don't, I love one of the quotes, just the, the, a quote that I, I would use a lot is don't be ordinary, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it's so many times we, you know, we, we just stick to status quo. And even in myself, I think even with this pandemic, I, I, I'm having a tough time. The tough time I'm having is they're telling us to just sit tight, do Zooms, and do the best you can. And I'm, I'm really having a tough time with that because yeah. this is not how 
my DNA. This is not how I operate. We're kind of looking for just a little bit more. And don't be ordinary is kind of where, you know, uh, breaking that, 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 that average, breaking that norm. I think how we've done such a great job in our society and our culture and all the great things we've done in America or if anybody has done, it's, it's been out of breaking out of that average space and getting into something extraordinary. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Being miraculous. Um, you know, uh, and, and that's what all of the great CEOs, what all of the great leaders, what all the great athletes, what all of the great people and ministers or anybody who's done anything on a grand scale. And I'm not talking about getting grand recognition because sometimes that can be false, yeah. but uh, in myself, you know, I, yeah, everyone puts us on this uh, platform because we were on Netflix, but what we were doing every year, I, I said, Lord, I don't know how we're going to exceed the expectations we did last year. And somehow we would do it, but it comes from a, a place of, of, of waking up with passion and purpose uh, every day to do something better than what you did the, the, the next day. And that's what, uh, you know, that's what we've done. And, and yeah. it was no different. And we saw it in the show. And I was surprised that, that we even looked the part. I was surprised that we even looked like we were doing something special. And everybody's kind of celebrating like, hey, you guys, you guys are really moving forward. Well, that's what we're doing every day. And... You know, we can't even celebrate those wins. I think we talk about for every high, there is a low. I'm not going to celebrate anything high because that can just go away tomorrow. We got to mm. keep pursuing past that celebration. Uh, and I even tell our guys, I'm not going to celebrate you until you leave, until you get that college degree, yeah. until I see you play. I don't even celebrate guys until, until they leave. They don't even know I'm celebrating them. Uh, I'll, I'll celebrate a guy. I'll say, hey, did you see so-and-so play on ESPN? When he was here, he worked hard. He did this, this, and this and got there. So I think I, I even told the guys in one of the episodes, I was gardening one-on-one. -on -one, and I forgot I even said it. And somebody had made a meme out of it and a quote out of it. And I just said it out of the blue. But the guy, he kind of crossed me over and he made a good move. And he shot it and he almost made it, right? Yeah. And all the players in the gym said, Oh, and they screamed like he almost made it. I said, why are you guys celebrating almost? Why are we celebrating almost? And so that was a, a moment uh, that I kind of take in myself. I, it irritates me to celebrate almost. I go to a high school game and uh, the high school kids are warming up and they do these windmills and they almost make a dunk. And I'm like, why are we celebrating that? You know, we're celebrating almost. We need to be celebrating completion. We need to celebrate yeah. uh, excellence, not almost. Oh, he almost did it. And so, that, yeah. That is so good. I, I, it's important for us to remember that, right? Because, you know, we, we it's not Little League soccer. Everybody gets a trophy. Exactly. Right. That bothers me. I'm, I don't want to get all that. That bothers me. <laughs> there is a space where my kids, because I have kids that are in athletics, Yeah. they needed to learn how to – come together and work together. And mm -hmm. there is a space for that. But then there's a time where they have to learn that there's a separation, that there's somebody that you're going to be competing against for the rest of your life. Even if it's yourself, you're going to be competing for the rest of your life. And you you can soften the word com competition up or however you want, but it's competing for the rest of your life. And, and I don't think that there's anything wrong with that. I know our society is trying to change it up, but uh, and there is a level of toxic that comes into play. So let's fix that. Let's yeah. not take away competition. Let's just fix the yeah. toxic. Don't say that it's wrong to compete. We, we do have a little level of, of, of toxic that comes into play. So I, I, agree. I, I would love to clear that up in our society and, and what, however we want to say it, because we're trying to soften you know, in terms of how we run our business, in terms of pursuing excellence, in terms of competition, in terms of, of, of masculinity, in terms of all that, why we don't need to take it away. We need to take away what's what the wrong that's in it. There's nothing wrong with me being strong. There's wrong with me. There's what's wrong is if I'm strong and I'm using it to hurt people, that's what's wrong. That's what needs to get fixed. If I, if I don't take away the fact that I'm strong. 
There's nothing wrong with that. So I think, and, and that's the same with, with competition. Don't take away competition. But if competition is, 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 is harming people and if, if, if it take away the wrong that's in it. So. Yeah. And there's actually a joy in the competition, right? I mean, yes. part of the reason why we watch a show like that on Netflix and, you know, or watch the year prior, the last, last dance with the Michael Jordan, because we want to see that competition. There is a striving to get better. Yes. You know, best is an illusion, but better is something that we can always achieve and try to pursue and go after. And that was an example that was exemplified for me, at least in watching uh, The Last Chance You, what, what you were doing. Like, guys, we, we can get better. Like, yeah. you think you're all there. We scored all these points against that other team. Yeah. But was that your best? Yeah. We can get better. Yeah. So I love Absolutely. I love that message that, that you have there. And and uh, and like you just said, nothing wrong with being strong. We can be strong and kind at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. It's. You know, don't say, don't be strong and that'll make me kind. Like, no, I can do both, you know? Dude, that's right. So tell me, coach, what's a challenge, maybe a fear or a doubt that, that you've had to personally overcome in, in this journey, this leadership journey? You see what we did there? Do you see? Little, little left you hanging. That wasn't a technology issue. You're talking to the guy who does the editing. We did that on purpose because you got to come back for the next episode to hear the remainder of this amazing, amazing, amazing interview. But that's part one. There's going to be fantastic nuggets that we share in, in part two. It was a little rude to do that, Paul, but you know, everybody loves a good cliffhanger, right? Yeah. I mean, it's a great, great question, right? We're all hanging on that last question about, you know, really his challenges and his fears. And wait till you hear the answer on that. So listen in on part two next week. But there's so much to unpack on that one, Rick. It yeah, so yeah. good, right? Yeah, I liked um, where he's talking about, um, you know, how they're, they're consistent, right? They're doing what they're doing every year. Um, but I like when he shows that humility, right? That doubt side a little bit too. So even though he's got to paint the direction, the leadership, he, he said in the interview, he says, Lord, I, I don't know how we're going to exceed the expectations we did last year. And somehow... They would just do it. I think that I think expectation setting is where alignment really comes together, yeah. and uh, and he just he goes in assuming, manifesting, and, and understanding that this team's going to exceed the expectations that that even he set for them, uh, which I think is a fantastic way to to go about it. Yeah, and I'm so glad you mentioned that expectation settings. I think it's so critical when we talk about alignment. I, I really think that this is one of the lost arts of leadership. I've seen it too many times, Rick. I've seen too many great leaders miss out on the alignment that they can do with their team. And, you know, and Coach Mosley has seen this too, right? He's seen this in other programs that he's been a part of, and he's chosen really to create alignment. And it's so important. We see, we talked about the movie um, last, last week about uh, The Greatest Showman, and you saw a point where there was a misalignment that was happening that was represented in that movie. And then he came back to alignment with, with the, the whole team, with, with all the, uh, the, the artists in that show. And it was just amazing, right? So the same is true for us as leaders. We've got to find alignment with folks. But we, speaking of alignment, I'm really psyched up about uh, our sponsor for today. Really kind of somebody we want to highlight and represent. And that's Absolutely. The Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Wow, I stole so, your thunder there for a second. So let's say it again, yeah. Fellowship of, of Christian Athletes, right? They're an international nonprofit Christian sports ministry founded in 1954 in Kansas City, Missouri. And they seek to equip young men and women athletes and coaches to know and grow in biblically sound values and lead others to do the same. It's got staff offices all over the place, all throughout the United States and abroad. And we wanted to give a special shout out to Carrie O'Neill in Virginia, who is a fan and listener of Breaking, uh, Breaking Average podcast, and also one of the, the many, many valuable FCA staff. So to Carrie, all the FCA staffers, thanks for what you're doing out there. And you can learn more about biz, uh, by visiting them at www.fca.org. Yeah, what a great organization. Carrie, thanks for listening in and watching this podcast and just the value that you make with coaches and players uh, all around our region and area. You know, I don't know if you knew this, Rick, but he was one of the uh, top 50, top 10, I think, in the leadership awards a few years back. So, uh, oh, for John Maxwell. So, it's pretty exciting. 
Um, I also want to mention um, the Breaking Average, our website. Uh, go visit our website. Uh, we've got some resources for you guys. Check it out. Go to breakingaverage.com. Um, and uh, we want to focus in on today just from that book that we represent here on this podcast, this yes factor. Obviously, we're talking about it. Coach Mosley is a great example of that. And uh, Rick, what I want to do is talk about what does the yes factor mean as far as alignment. We're already getting into it a little bit, but let's dive a little deeper what is why is this so critical why is this so important uh your perspective yeah i look at alignment in in two ways i look at the business and the personal side and so i'll start with personally i mean personally my brain is a golf swing and in um it, it essentially you know you could just it could be flowing everything's perfect you have three or four good rounds and then all of a sudden you just start hooking the ball and the reason why that happens to me is maybe there's a relationship that's not exactly where it's supposed to be. So maybe my kids and I are, are not getting along really well at the moment, or maybe something happened at work. But when that happens for me, I have to get back into alignment in order for me to get my brain and creativity and things flowing really, uh, really well. So I always explain that to my kids because I'll come to them for resolution because I, I don't want things not only to, to drag on, but I've got to fix the swing. I got to, I got to make the adjustment. I got to figure it out so that I, I'm good internally so I can be good externally uh, in business and everything else I do. So alignment's very important for me there. Um, on the business side, there's one picture I always show. You can Google it. it it's actually pretty funny. Um, but there's this bridge project. And, and it's, uh, it, it's been represented as real. It's actually a, an artist rendering, but it looks so real. It's unbelievable, but this bridge is coming together in the ocean and it's just misaligned that if they were to connect it, two lanes would be, you know, the outside lanes would be falling into the ocean and the only thing that would connect are the center lanes. Great picture to represent what a misalignment can really do in business. I, I can't tell you how many times in projects or things that I've been asked to, to come in and troubleshoot and solve started with a simple misunderstanding of a comment. You know, we did a, I highlighted in, in a previous podcast, the definition of done and, and why that was important to me in business, because I, I had made a large assumption when somebody told me something was done that turned out to be, you know, not true. I didn't validate it. So alignment becomes so important in business because basically assumptions is the death of productivity, right? It, that, that's, essentially where uh, things will fail. So I, to me, that's why alignment's important, Paul. What about you? Yeah, and you're, you're really jogging some ideas here for me. I'm writing down the word standards, right? So I'm in kind of the standards business. If people don't align the standards, then you're, you're not gonna create a product, you're not gonna create an innovation, a solution, an offering that's gonna be able to be useful and helpful for anybody. It's gonna be misaligned, right? It's the reason why we have standards. It's the reason why we have specifications. It's the reason why we have values. Those values are absolutely critical. If we're not aligned to our values, then we're never gonna be able to reach that vision that we have. Now, as a leader, we should have a vision for sure. But how do we create alignment with our, that team, right? So that's so important. So the alignment is obviously critical for the, the coach, the leader, but it's also important as you watch in that Netflix uh, documentary with Coach Mosley, he had to create alignment with each of those players. I think it's so important. Um, so let's kind of set the sequence here, right? So we talked last week about an in, in, invitation, right? Coach Mosley had an invitation to come to East LA College and be able to coach at his alma mater. He created an invitation for his players. He cast an image, a vision in terms of how they're gonna do it. So when you cast that invitation, when you share that invitation, then you get to this next piece that's alignment so critical the invitation isn't enough you've got to got to be proactive and take that alignment so you know this idea of you know the fact that we face fear all the time but we face fear by saying yes i think it's so powerful and that's really what we wanted to tee up last week but that gives us the courage to break average when we break average you see that reflected in the alignments that start to happen you see that in the last chance university when you watch that basketball uh when you binge watch that you start to see alignment with some of the players you see a lot of misalignments by the way that's gonna happen what do you do when you see misalignments it's not perfect murphy shows up things happen you've got to keep at it don't give up you know <laughs> one of my favorite scenes and I asked, asked coach this later is that the, the eight minute scene, right? You know what I'm talking about, Rick? We're here for eight minutes. 
he says nothing. Yes. He says yep. nothing. And then eventually he's obviously they come together, they pull together and uh, there's alignment that happens right there. It's one of the more powerful moments of that. Not, not necessarily something you're going to do every time as a leader, but sometimes you got to do something different to make that happen. So how does alignment happen? I think it's simple, but profound contributors align when, when those values align with the, the vision of the leader, right? So you've got to really align to those values because value, values represent beliefs, beliefs drive behavior that creates alignment. So that's some of my thoughts, but I want to know how do we cultivate really this element in other leaders, maybe our team? What are some thoughts that you have on that? You just jogged a, a, a really powerful exercise that we used to we do in, in in seminars, and it was inspired by a good friend of mine, uh, not not the John Steinbeck, but John Stenbeck is his name, and I've had a great opportunity to co-author books with him, and, and he's just a great thinking partner. But we did this exercise one time when we were trying to teach alignment and strategy and communication to our leaders is that we had these really difficult puzzles and we searched hard for almost monochromatic puzzles. And we gave people and teams the puzzles and we asked them to put the edges around, right? Get, get the end pieces. Cause when you work a puzzle, you get the end pieces and then you kind of fill in the middle, right? Yep. Uh, we, we asked them to get the edge pieces. And once they were done with that, to come back to us. And when they came back to us, we threw the top of the box away and told them to finish the puzzle. And watch them struggle because they didn't have a picture to refer to in order to fill in the middle of the puzzle. So it was really easy for them. But that to me is the perfect analogy when we start talking about alignment and the communication that's required. What I see most leaders do is sometimes just paint the picture. Sometimes they just put the guardrails up, but they don't show their teams how to fill in the middle. And that's where the alignment or misalignment can occur. And we already said assumptions uh, become the death of productivity. So I think when we start to cultivate, right, and, and we want to teach and, and transfer this, I think that analogy is, is the best that I know of to, to really tell them that you can't just walk by and set an edge, right? You've got to walk by and paint the picture and give them the guide that they can refer to in order to make sure that they're accomplishing what, what we need to as a team. Yeah, I love that. You're really talking about, and I love the focus on communication, Rick. It's so critical, you know, because how often that that metaphor of the puzzle of the edge pieces, I can't do a puzzle without seeing the picture. That's Can right. you? Not at all. I mean, maybe it's possible. Can you imagine a bunch of Legos being tossed on the table? It's gonna, it's the best Lego kit of all time, but there's no picture. It's the Death Star. It's the thousand dollar one, right? Yeah. It's the Death Star. And if you don't have that picture, at least, even if you don't have the instructions, but there's no picture, you're not going to go anywhere. Now, hopefully you're going to provide some instruction to them as well, but it doesn't mean you do that for them. It means that you're communicating what needs to be done, providing a little bit of semblance in terms of here, here are the things. Remember what we're going for, guys. This is the target. The vision, the vision is the big picture of where, where we're going, but allowing them to step forward into it and doing the work. Alignment allow, is allowing them to do the work, which I think is powerful. And I think part of that communication, Rick, is asking good questions. <laughs> you know, a coach, we know this because we've gone through some coaching programs ourselves, but a really effective coach is going to ask some powerful questions. I remember another coach coach Paul Shaw and I think he watches this podcast too and he's one of the great soccer coaches for our youth here in the state of Virginia working with the Olympic development program and others and uh, for one year he he was a mentor to me I was a varsity high, high school coach at one time and that was such a joy I love love coaching those kids but he came in and he taught me something about coaching because I don't know about you Rick but I, when I grew up my coach didn't really coach he just told us what to do <laughs> yeah, that's right. Right, kind of barked orders, and he he showed me the way. He showed me the power of questions and how to really allow those players to find the answer for themselves. We don't necessarily always need to give them the answer. We need to ask the right questions and lead them to the right answer. And when you do that, you got alignment, and that's really powerful. So I think we're ready. I don't know if you want to add to that, but I think we're ready for a tip and challenge. Yeah, absolutely. I do want to highlight one more time, though, our wonderful sponsor, uh, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Please visit fca.org. Uh, and again, just a special shout out to that organization and what they do for us. But yeah, let's get into our tip and challenge here. 
Um, and and I'm, yeah. I'm going to pull on the, the thread a little bit more on the picture and the vision. Um, but this actually is a story that happened today of, of the re recording. Um, but um, we, we just uh, released a, a, an app to market and uh, there were some things that needed to be fixed. And uh, I had communicated that the fix was going to happen by Saturday uh, of this week, just a couple of days you know, away. And my, my developer came back to me and was like, I, I think this is gonna be fixed tonight. And I was like, I know. And I said, so let's let's talk about expectations because by me establishing that it's going to be done on Saturday, I've either set up that we're going to meet and or exceed expectations because my my view is the big picture. My view is also understanding that there's probably another unanticipated issue that the team doesn't see because they're so laser focused on it that could cause another round of this before it's actually fully repaired. So experience teaches me to set the proper expectation to make sure that my team's aligned and to my customers and to my, and to my sponsors that they basically have the opportunity to meet and or exceed. So that is my tip and my challenge, create a way and, and make sure that you have your eyes on the big picture that you are establishing as that leader guardrails to consistently allow your team to meet and or exceed, but to not fail or feel like they failed. Now, yeah. we know that failure is something that's a great driver. We've talked about that. It's how we fail. I don't yes. ever want anybody to fail in the sense of expectations. It's okay if the idea didn't work, but there should still be enough time where we can meet the expectation and still recover. And that's kind of that eyes on the big picture. So that's my tip and challenge, Paul. Yeah, I love that. That's a really great, you know, real example, you know, how important it is. Those expectations, you know, the truth of it is, Rick, we have expectations on ourselves. And we, we should capture those. I, you and I both use scrum boards. I mean, I use it personally in my own life. And that creates an expectation of what I anticipate getting done that day. It's powerful. When I do that with the team, I'm creating those expectations. And we're, we can be clear what it is. And we can even measure that. So that's a whole other discussion in itself. But I think it's pretty powerful. It does create alignment. Um, you know, I want to kind of go back to Coach Mosley. And we're going to talk more about relationships next week. You will love part two, guys. You want to tune in on that. Tell all your friends. Tell all your friends about this podcast. Tell all your friends about that Netflix show. But uh, have them come back and, and listen in on this and, and as we continue this discussion of the S factor. But he talks about empathy. Rick, it, I kid you not, empathy is probably the most powerful trait of a leader, isn't it? It is. And when we have a little bit of empathy, and you may watch the Netflix and say, well, I don't see empathy. Well, remember, they're, they're editing it for a show, so you may not see it, all the parts, but it's there. And you can sense that in this interview, and you will see it in those, as you watch that show. And I think that's so important for us in creating alignment. You mentioned a quote, I love it, the Jim Collins quote, and I want to, it just bears repeating. Building a visionary company, a business, a team, a a rollout of what you're going to put out, right? What Rick's just shared his great example of, of a product that they rolled out. It requires 1% vision, not 0%, 1% vision. That's so important. And 99% alignment. I love that. That's like, that's a tip. That's a challenge in itself, but I would say, go back to values, get alignment by reviewing those values. And because without values, you have no vision. You're not going to see that vision. It's not going to happen. You're not going to build the puzzle and so important. So Rick, any uh, close out comments there before we, we land the plane? Yeah, yeah, I just, the, the empathy side hit me, right? At, at that piece too, because empathy is different for everybody else. And, and so your, 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 or, you know, how you display it is different person by person that you encounter. So uh, the comment you made uh, about Coach Mosley just made me reflect for a second is, you may not recognize it as empathy, but the person he's communicating to certainly does. And the, you have to meet people where they are to be empathetic as well, right? It's, it's not just, you know, having one way of coaching, one way of directing. You have to meet people where they are. And, and I thought that how he handled, like, he, he, you know, if you watch the series, he's got one player that's just got a temper and, and tends to yeah. quit on himself. And how you show empathy to that player is, is completely different than to you know the other one that has such high expectations and exceeds. So, and as a lot of times as a leader, you tend to write off 
that other person and, and just go to the person that, that you seem to be communicating with, but that's not alignment. So I, I, I find that interesting. Uh, yeah. It was just reflecting on that, Paul. Um, I, I want to shout out FCA one more time. So you can, can visit fca.org. And also, please go visit us, leave a review, help us out. Um, if you know of a leader that we should be talking to, if you have somebody who's like a Coach Mosley that you can see uh, uh, we have a fantastic time pulling on the threads of those types of interviews, you can visit us at breakingaverage.com. You can leave uh, uh, requests there, comments there, uh, and see some really good blog posts and, and content that Paul's been putting out there very, very uh, diligently and, and very aligned with everything that we believe uh, with Breaking Average. So, Paul? Yeah, well, Rick, this has been fantastic. I really appreciate your time. Uh, so much fun. You know, and, and again, part two is coming up with uh, Coach Mosley. And uh, one of the things, I'm going to give you a little bit of a tease, guys. Um, we talked about Jim Collins. Rick, you know about the bus metaphor, right? You got to get the Absolutely. right people on the bus. Yeah. Guys, I'm just going to tee it up. There's a bus moment that's going to happen. We're going to talk about it next week on this podcast. So tune in. So once again, on Breaking Average, we're excited to be able to just do what we do. Lead others, uh, align with others, make a difference. And uh, we ask that you join us again next time. Thank you for listening to the Breaking Average podcast. If you loved what you heard, please take a moment to subscribe. All opinions and comments expressed in this podcast are those of the participants and do not reflect the opinions or views of any of the advertisers, producers, or platforms. This show was produced by R Squared Multimedia. A special thank you to Milestone Melodies for our theme music. As you continue your day, what is one action that you can apply from this podcast to your life? Tune in for our next episode as we continue to challenge everyone to break average.